Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Embroidery Hub and I know it's been a while since I've done a full length tutorial for you guys so I'm super excited for this episode. One of our beautiful distributors asked us how to embroider a dog collar so I decided to kill two birds with one stone and create a video for you guys. So let's just jump right in. Woof. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the little bell icon below. That way you can stay updated with our next videos and trust me, they're going to be great. So before we waste any more time, let's jump right into how we can embroider on a dog collar. But before we get into that, let's first talk about the two different types of dog collars. So we have dog collars like this one that have double straps. And then we have dog collars with just one strap where that's more similar to like a perhaps a leash or a belt. Um, so for the ones that have two straps, if it's too small to fit into something like the belt hoop, then you're gonna need another alternative. And I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. So for those of you who do not know what a belt hoop is, this is a specialty accessory that is designed specifically for embroidering on belts or anything belt shaped, like a ribbon, a dog collar, leashes, etc. So for this case, we're not gonna be using the belt hoop and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Uh, the belt hoop would actually make it a little bit harder only in this case um, because it is double strapped and it's not large enough to be able to go on the other side like if we had a leash for instance we'd be able to to get it so that this can go underneath the sewing arm remember that this needs to go underneath that way you're not embroidering over the other side this is a double strap now if you really have no other way of doing this which you should if you have regular embroidered machine hoops you can make it work by just you know flattening it out and centering it so that you just get on one part of the strap the part that you're going to embroider but that's too much work. So let's take out the belt hoop for this instance. If you guys wanna see uh, what you can embroider on the belt hoop, we do have videos on that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that. So with floating, we try to avoid this option unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, that doesn't mean you can't get great results with floating. I have personally floated um, some items and have been able to pull it off. But of course, when we are running large production, there's not really that much time to be you know, pinning things and just trying to make it work. Before I get into what we're actually gonna do, we have a video on floating that I'm gonna go ahead and link so you guys can get a better idea of what it is and what it's best to use for. So we have ruled out the floating option for this particular case. So what do we have left? Right here, I have my size B hoop and it's actually a lot more simple than you think. All I'm gonna do is just hoop it and since it is small enough to be able to get through the other side, as you can see, we'll have space so that the float, the sewing arm right here, so that's able to easily go through. So I'll show you what I mean in just a minute, but for now, let's go ahead and hoop. I'm just using one sheet of a light tearaway stabilizer because this is a fairly thick strap, so you don't wanna use cutaway, which is heavier. So usually when you hoop, you hoop your stabilizer first and then you hoop your item. So I'm gonna go ahead and first put the item right in the middle. And my hoop has some marks that I created right here in the center so that I know I'm centering it correctly, but I'll get into that in just a minute. And then I'm going to place the stabilizer in between. Woof. All right, so I went ahead and I hooped it following my little black lines that I have here in the center of my hoop. And now, as you guys can see, I have enough space here for my opening. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just put it in the machine. All right, so we already know that we're using tear away backing. Now, as far as the needle is concerned, you can use a 7511 sharp point or an 8012. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep my 7511 needle in here because I'm only doing one of these dog collars. Um, and yeah, they're pretty thick, but the 7511 should be fine. Now, if you're gonna do a larger uh, production, I might recommend switching up to your 8012 needle just because this is such a thick material. As far as speed is concerned, I'm gonna leave it at 600 to 700 just because the material is a little bit thicker and I do want the lettering to show up very well. Uh, this is one of those type of materials that the lettering can sink into. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a sheet of water soluble stabilizer right on top no need to hoop it together with it you can just float it right above 
So I think we've covered all bases as far as materials are concerned, but now how do we center? So I already have the belt pretty much centered in the hoop, and my design is already centered in this hoop, so it's safe to say that it will already come out in the center. However, we still need to trace and make sure that the needle's gonna fall exactly where we want it to. So right now, I am just aligning the needle to the center to make sure that the lettering is as centered as possible. So let's go ahead and press start, finally. Sorry. It looks like it's all done. So let me go ahead and take it out of the hoop. And then all I'm gonna do is just snip any little extra tails that came out and get rid of this aqua top that's, uh, or water soluble stabilizer, better said, that's on top. All right, so this looks pretty great. If you guys are wondering, yeah, what this says, it says wow wow. And <laughs> for those of you who are not Hispanic, this is basically like a Hispanic way of saying like woof woof. Um, so it's like a nickname that people give to dogs. And our uh, lovely videographer, Ronnie, actually named his dog wow wow. So this is how he decided to spell it. So um, I'm excited to see what it's gonna look like on that cute little doggy. Wow wow, ay que lindo, I'm so excited. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right guys, so that is how you embroider a dog collar. And as you can see, it's nothing crazy. It's just a matter of taking a few simple steps. Again, we are open to doing more videos on all types of projects. So if you have any particular projects that you're not sure uh, what the best way to approach is, then let us know in the comments below and we might make a video out of it. And one last thing, do not go anywhere until you have clicked the link below and joined our Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery. Why? Because we have thousands of embroiders in there constantly answering questions, asking questions, uh, sharing their expertise, and I'm constantly posting updates and videos in there. So I highly encourage you guys to take uh, advantage of this free resource that we've created for you and we have rounded up thousands of skilled embroiders and apparel decorators to help you guys out. All right, so thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Woof.